You don't know what you don't know. And nothing could be more true than with online business. Sometimes it's a blessing and it actually works in your favour to be almost a little bit naive about things. Other times it's a curse and it holds you back and it's just better to know up front some of these things. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you some of my key takeaways that I have learned over the years running my rank and rent business. Now, these are the things I actually wish I would have known from the outset. I've kind of learned the hard way. I've kind of learned just being in the weeds and delving through everything uh, step by step and just learning these things off of my own accord. That being said, I think these are really gonna help you. So without further ado, let's delve in. And it all kind of stems from this first point. With Rank and Rent, you absolutely have to be proactive. You have to take action. So whether that's, um, you know, needing to build something at, at that particular time, whether that be a process, whether that be a website, whether that be a connection, you have to be proactive, you have to just do the work. And that's the truth. Rank and Rent, there is a lot of work involved. While it sounds very, very simple in theory, there is a lot of hard work to get this business off the ground. If you imagine it like a rocket, a lot of building a rank and rent business is getting the rocket off of the ground. Once you're in orbit, that's when the money starts rolling in and that's when it becomes a little bit more passive, but more on that point uh, down the line. Equally, one of the best things that you can do with rank and rent is contacting clients. That's where the money is gonna come in. So you need to be proactive, you need to make those conversations, you need to introduce yourself and you need to essentially network. Next is you absolutely have to play the long game. Like any business, it's gonna take some time for you to make traction, particularly if you don't have any rank and rent assets at the moment. I mean, a lot of this business is based on SEO and SEO does just take time. Now I'm a little bit guilty, I've put those um, videos out there on my channel about ranking a website in you know between seven uh, there's one project I've done and I ranked it in seven days there's another project I did it in 45 days but the truth is they are rare exceptions to the rule and ranking is just one aspect of this business you do need to be patient you do need to understand that you are building a business for the long term here you don't just want to make a quick buck you want to make a consistent living from this business so do do have a long-term approach, and you'll find that having this approach actually impacts everything that you do. Not only will it impact how you um, build relationships with potential clients, it also will have an impact on just, you know, it will stop you making those hasty decisions which can really impact your business. Uh, you know, for instance, it will stop you building those potentially toxic or dodgy backlinks because you'll realize that, you know, sometimes it might be better just to wait for a better opportunity down the line. That's just one example, but hopefully you get what I'm trying to get at here. Next, you have to be persistent. You're gonna get knocked back. You're gonna have conversations with clients that don't go as expected. You could script them out perfectly. You could use the same script that you did with a previous client that worked really, really well, and it could fall flat on its face. You know, you have to be persistent. Sometimes you have to contact clients multiple times. You could send, let's as an example, you could call them three times and they don't pick up. You could, you could email them, cold email them 10 times and they don't respond. But the truth is, you might get a response on that 11th time, that 12th time. So you have to be persistent. Don't take anything personally and be willing to put in the work. So be persistent. Next, you need to be flexible, open-minded and positive. Now, in terms of flexibility, that's just the nature of running a business. Things change. For instance, Google is always changing. You know, one, one week they may, you know, the, the search engines may work in a particular way. They may roll out a massive update and the next week you have to just shift focus or do something slightly different. At the same time, you need to be open-minded with your projects. You may, for instance, start a project in a particular um, niche and you may notice down the line that it actually works in your favor to, to go into the sub niche. So you might need to kind of restructure your website. You may need to delete things off. You know, there could be a lot of hard work that you've put in um, for, for, that, for that kind of structure or whatever. And you may need to readjust it or you may just need to um, scrap that project altogether and, you know, maybe delve deeper in it into a new project that's kind of based off of your old project. You see where I'm going with this. You really need to be open minded. And at the same time, you need to be positive the whole time. You need to believe that this will succeed. Being positive 
is not only important for how you run your business, but it's also important for how you come across to clients. If you're not positive, if you don't think this can work, if you don't believe that you're gonna generate profitable leads for clients, how are you gonna sell them? You need to believe in the business as well. If, you, if you're here just to make money and not to help clients, this isn't the right business for you. You also need to be willing to take risks and make mistakes. Now we've all been there. We sit in keyword research tools for hours on end trying to find the perfect project. But the truth is, unless you have a project that's actively um, you know, being built or actively at least has a chance of ranking, you're never gonna make any money with this business model. And taking it a step further, there'll be some things, you know, you, you may want to, for instance, you may want to kind of stick close to kind of white hat techniques. So a white hat SEO that is. So, you know, really, really following Google's policies, et cetera, which is always something which you should be doing. But at the same time, you may need to do a few things which you, you may feel a little bit uncomfortable with. You need to take those risks. You could be holding a conversation with a client that you just don't want to have. It may be saying something to a client that you just would rather not say. Maybe you're not confrontational. You know, maybe they're paying you $500 a month for your, for your rank and rent asset, but the leads are worth far more to them and you should, you should probably be charging $800, $1,000. You need to have that awkward conversation, obviously at the right time, obviously frame the right way, but you need to be willing to, to take those risks essentially. And with anything in life, you are going to make mistakes. It's just a matter of how life works. As long as you're learning from those mistakes, as long as you are, putting those lessons into practice into your business, then ultimately you are only going to succeed because with each iteration, you are getting better. So for instance, you could start five projects, they could all absolutely flop, but you could learn one essential lesson on each project. By the time you got to the sixth project, you've got five different lessons, perhaps in five different fields, which are all being funneled straight into that project. So that project, for instance, that sixth project has a massive chance of success. That is just life. I've built many websites in my 10 to 15 years of SEO. The first one was a disaster, but the websites I build now are all based off the lessons I learned from that first very website all the way through to the dozens and dozens that I've created ever since. Next, and this is really, really important, especially as you scale and build that portfolio, is you're only as good as your processes and systems. And I'm gonna take this a step further. This business model is only enjoyable when you have the right processes and systems in place. Now, this takes time, it also takes experience, it also takes a bit of knowledge. You build this as you go. Don't worry so much about having everything optimized from the outset, but at the same time, maybe document some of the things that you're doing, some of the things that are working well and that you can um, you know, build into future projects. So I'll give you a, a, a prime example of this. And I've, I've made my, one of my webs, website templates available for purchase purely because it benefits me so much. Every time I start a new project, I just import that template because I know it works, I know it converts, and I know I can save myself a considerable amount of time upfront building a website just by importing that template in. That's a process that I've built in. In terms of systems, you know, I use the same social media profiles, I use the same citation service, I use the same tools. That's all about the processes and systems. I've put them in a certain order. So when it comes to building a new project, I don't feel overwhelmed. I can get everything set up in minimal amount of time. I create a minimum viable product. We try to get it ranked and we go from there. That's what this is all about. You're not gonna perfect everything from day one. It does take time as well, but it's all about systems. It's all about processes and it's all about momentum. Next, and this is kind of obvious, but relationship building is absolutely everything in the rank and rank business. Of course, you're gonna be working with so many different people. Um, everything, all of your rental agreements will come off the back of relationship building. And we need to think about them not as a transactional relationship, but as something where, and I think this ties into the next one, with a customer first approach. We, are, we ultimately want to help them build their business. We want them to get more, more customers and we want them to succeed. And if we go in with that mindset and if we, are, if we allow, allow them to, to do that, then we will do so much better ourselves. Now, you could start getting leads on your site. They may be of a low quality. You may not know that to begin with, to be fair. But if you just, you know, you know deep down whether they're the right leads to send to a client. If they're, if they're duds, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna help them. It's not gonna serve them. And you're just gonna strain that relationship. At the same time, it may be that you need to do a few things you perhaps didn't wanna do. You might wanna take a client out for a coffee, as an example, if you're working in a local area. You know, that's just a little thing that I would um, kind of recommend, you know, you think about. This is, 
You are building a business here, not just an online website, or at least I think you should be doing that, and at least that's worked very well for me. And there's a, I'm gonna to touch upon this in, in a future point, actually, because this ties in with something else I want to mention. I also want to mention that there's also multiple ways to go about rank and rent. Now, I teach a lot on this channel about you know ranking websites, and uh, there's gonna be videos on how to contact clients, etc., etc. but, the truth is rank and rent can be done in various different ways. For instance, you can go for really, really specific sub niches in really kind of uh, specific areas, or you can go more national. You can, you can rank out, rank out, you can rent out um, an entire site to a client as an example, or you could rent out individual landing pages to multiple clients. So you could kind of be in multiple different locations at a time, all based off one asset. So yeah, there's loads of different ways to go at Rank and Rent, and there's loads of different means of uh, monetization as well. It doesn't just it doesn't just have to be a flat fee. Fee, you know. Ultimately, when you th think of Rank and Rent, you're thinking of renting out the entire website. That's typically the the, the method and model to go down. But when you think about rank and rent, as long as you're ranking and as long as you're renting something out, so you're renting out your lead form as an example, then this 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 whole model applies essentially. So as an example, um, and I think Jackie Chow talks about this a lot, um, he, he does a lot of, um, he, what does he call it again? Uh, retail rank and rent. So as an example, he does a lot of affiliate marketing. So he has like a, a lot of ranking, articles in the search engine, you know, best best something for why something. And he will basically, because he's ranking so well and he's, he's generating so much revenue uh, for those uh, different uh, products, he is reaching out to different companies and he is basically reformatting his list based on who pays most. So he's renting those positions. So you see what I mean here? There's so many different ways to implement this. It's not just your typical service location. It's not just local businesses. And another thing about it as well is you don't just have to work with local businesses. You can work with online businesses as well. So, I mean, that's a topic for another time. There will be a video on that. But just get keep thinking. There's so many different ways to, to go about this. Next is budget accordingly. Now, this may or may not be something that is you know, you have to worry about, but it is if you are on a very, very limited budget. It's also very, very um, important if you, you know, you're not quite sure how much it's going to cost, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You want to forecast ahead. Um, you know, you may, yeah, you may just have, you may have limitations with your budget. I do actually have a separate video on how much it costs to start a rank and rent business. I suggest you watch that. You can find that on my channel. Um, Maybe run a little search on my channel there. Uh, and maybe I'll drop a link in the description as well. But yeah, budgeting is so, so important. I would say that, you know, you need to invest in your business because ultimately that's gonna enable you to succeed. There are things you're gonna need. There are tools you're gonna need. But at the same time, you don't just wanna waste your money. You want to be a little bit, um, you know, for instance, you want to start with uh, the minimum expense possible. So when it comes to building these websites, you don't just want to throw money at them uh, willy nilly, even if, if, you ha if that's if you have got the budget, of course, you want to spend your money appropriately and you want to make sure that it's going on the right things. So as an example, um, you know, you may be really, really tempted to buy backlinks, obviously very, very important, but that comes in time. You know, you want to give your site a chance to rank before you even need to throw backlinks at it. That's just an example. You don't want to throw them at your website right, right off the gate. It's also not a very good SEO practice either. So that's just a little example of that. At the same time, you do need to be realistic with your expectations in relation to your ability. So if you've never built a website before, or you've got no experience of SEO, even though it could be a really, really easy keyword that you're going after, or a, technically a very, very easy project, it's gonna take you time to learn how to rank. It's gonna learn, it's gonna take you uh, time to essentially get all the processes and components in place, which I've kind of mentioned earlier. Um, and at the same time, you know, sometimes you do everything right. And for some, for whatever reason, your site just doesn't rank. It, it does happen, okay? And they'll, I'll touch upon this in a, in a future point as well. Um, but yeah, just be realistic. If you're an SEO expert and you've done this time and time again, then you get more confident. And it is, it is all about uh, growing and kind of build it. It's, it's almost like, um, your, your, this business is all about setting the foundations and going from there. You get better in time, your portfolio gets better, 
Um, and as you get better at SEO and every other component of online business, whether it's relationship building, etc., your results get better. So bear, take that, um, you know, bear that in mind as we go forward. At the same time, and this kind of touches upon a previous point about multiple ways to go about rank and rent, you can actually turn failed projects into profitable assets. So as an example, if you just cannot, for whatever reason, rent out your site, it may be that the quality of the leads that you're getting just aren't working. It could be that you're not getting leads altogether. There are different means of potentially monetizing that asset. As an example, you could throw a load of um, informational keywords on that site and you could start, you know, uh, you could implement uh, Google AdSense, Azoic, Mediavine, obviously it depends on your traffic, but you can monetize in other ways. So just think about um, ways you could per perhaps um, using projects to, to help you. So even if it's just using a project um, to convince a client to get on board with you, you know, say you're, you know, you know, say, say you manage to get a, a project uh, up to position five in the search engines, um, you could use that to convince other clients that, or potential clients, you know, this is what I've done for, for another client, this is how it works, you know, see what I mean? Be a little bit, think about it a little bit and see how you can use it to basically obtain new business. Now here's a big one. Rank and rent is very simple. At least it is in theory, at least it is to me, but it isn't easy. There's so many things you need to do. You've got a lot of spinning plates. Convincing, convincing what can be strangers to part their money on an initiative that they have no understanding of just is a challenge. So you do need to be mindful of that and you do need to you know, factor that in. In fact, and I probably shouldn't be saying this on my channel, but rank and rent isn't for everyone. It really, really isn't. Um, it does take time, as I've kind of showcased throughout this video so far. There's a lot of things you need to do, and it does take a little bit of money as well. It's not free, um, and there's you know there's an opportunity cost. If you're focusing on rank and rent, could you be doing something else? You know, could there be another business that's actually better for you? Um, nevertheless, there's a lot of opportunity here. There's a lot of money to be made. But just take into account it isn't easy. But to be honest, the best things in life aren't easy and you'll actually probably find more enjoyment from it as a business because it's a challenge. If this was really, really easy, you know, and you're making thousands and thousands per month, you know, without putting in any effort, you probably wouldn't take it very seriously. And the truth is, if it was that easy, everyone else would be doing it. So you just, you know, think about it like that. At the same time, not all projects will succeed. And this ties in with my next point, and it is ultimately a numbers game. So especially if you're new to this, especially if you're new to SEO, you're gonna make all sorts of mistakes. You know, I've kind of touched upon this already, but be, be open to the fact that not all projects will succeed. It might not even be anything that you've done. It's just the way search engines can work. It's just the way things can, can happen. You know, you could, I'll give you an example of this. You could start a project, you could done all the research, it could be, it could tick every single box for a rank and rent project. Someone could, tomorrow, could buy an age domain Go after your niche. Obviously, this is very slim chances, you know, but it, it could happen and they could just outrank you straight away. They could climb right to the top of Google and you could never outrank them. And because they're in, say, first or second position, they're getting much of the uh, the organic traffic and it could just, you know, or, or Google could change your algorithm. So, yeah, no, you know, not all projects will succeed. I'll give you another quick example of this. I entered a, I entered a niche where there was no... GMBs, there was no sponsored listing. So it's just literally organic from right at the top of the search engines downward. And, you know, I started the project, I got right into to the first position. And then with a Google update and with, you know, um, a few changes to the industry, there's now a sponsored listing at the top, um, the Google service ads, um, which go right to the top. There's a GMB, there's a people always ask widget, and I'm, I'm still in first position in an organ organic sense, but I'm pushed right the way down. And my traffic's taken a massive hit, and ultimately that project isn't as successful as it once was, or as, as valuable to a client as it once was. So we have, to, we have to take these things into account, okay? And that's why it's a numbers game. The more, ultimately, the more projects you have, the more chance you can succeed. You don't want to dilute yourself though, at the same time, you don't want to, um, make this overwhelming for you. You don't want this to. Ha you don't want to have so much going on that you can't manage it. Um, but ultimately, if you think of this as the more projects that you have, the more chances that you will succeed. I think. I think personally, and from my experiences, this has worked out really, really well. Also, it puts less pressure on each project, and it stops you kind of 
being really pedantic on them and you know if you've got one asset you can you can sit there and you can literally go in the rank tracker every day and you can sweat over it you can put all this pressure on it it's not i, don't, I think it's a very way, nice way to live or, or run a business so i like having multiple projects you know those that are failing you know throw some black hat backlinks on it or be a little bit more risky you can do those things because it doesn't there's not much pressure there's not there's not everything riding on it so particularly those that you don't have that rental agreement in place I think I've touched upon this already, but just bear in mind that first and foremost, this is a people business. So when it comes to contacting clients, be mindful, be respectful of their times, think about what's gonna work for them. As an example, if you're in the landscaping niche, calling them at, I don't know, between nine and 12 a.m., they're probably working, they don't want to be bothered. You're probably not gonna get a very good chance of success ringing them at that time. They, excuse me, it may be better to contact them in the evening when they're typically, sorry, I'm this is burping a lot, it's disgusting. Um, it, may be, it may be better to contact them in, any, in the evening, maybe even the weekend, which may not suit your preferences. At the same time, you know, uh, uh, if you're in the, as I say, a lawyer niche, uh, solicitor, obviously very, very competitive, but let's just say we're going for a more professional niche, they actually may respond better to emails and it may be better to contact them early morning. You see what I mean? Because they're coming to the office, it may be, it actually may be better to email them at 6 a.m. because that's gonna be the first thing hopefully that they see. So you have to take these things into account. Remember, there's people, there's people at the other end of this. It's not just a business, it's people who want to, and we need to find out their goals, their motivations. They may um, not be looking for more business. You know, you might get rejected from a client because um, they're happy with their current level of business. They don't want to take on more work, more work. They don't want to expand any further. So bear that in mind as well. Now, this one is really, really interesting. And I think, to be honest, I've not really mentioned this much on this channel before, but I think this is one of the most golden ways to get started. I'm probably gonna release a whole video on this. Don't forget you're in a circle. You know, contacting people who you don't know already, it's a tough sell. It really is a tough sell. But I tell you what isn't a tough sell, or at least, uh, is a less tough sell, and that's selling people who already trust you. So as an example, I'll give you another little example. We had our patio relayed recently, and he did a fantastic job. So first and foremost, I know they provide a really, really good service. He charged us a reasonable rate, so I know he doesn't take the mick uh, on that alone. Some people obviously shop for price. And third, I, now, I, I had so many different conversations with him, I built a relationship with him, and not only that, did a little bit of digging, he doesn't have a website. His company doesn't have a website. And I know he's looking for business. So I can, I'm, I'm actually gonna do this, to be honest. I haven't done it so far, for full transparency, um, purely because I've got so many projects ongoing. But I'm gonna contact him and I'm gonna say, look, you, you, um, I think you could really benefit from a business. I do this, I do this, I do this uh, for, full, for full time. This is what I, I'm, I'm doing well at. How about, you know, I obviously talk, I need to think about how I'm gonna frame it, but basically I'm gonna to go to him and I'm gonna present the whole model to him. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this is, I will have such a, a high chance of getting him to become a client. At least putting him in the, in the, in the, uh, the search engines, at least boosting his business, because he's not doing it at the moment. So any business he gets from online is gonna be uh, a win. It's gonna be, it's gonna be um, progress for him. So that's, that's just a little side anecdote, little side story. But think about anyone you may know who, you know, it could be a, a, a physiotherapist, it could be a, a teacher who wants to tutor online. Yeah, any of these different, any, any different service, if that you know, friends, family, etc., even just um, people you know in your community, personal trainer as an example, anyone you know, think about how you could perhaps get them on board with Rank and Rent that they are gonna be an easier sell than um, uh, cold calling people. Sorry, I lost my mind there, I've been talking a lot. We are getting there, but keep watching this. There's, there's some really, really important, really important points. You, what with whatever happens with Rank and Rent, and this is really important, is you will acquire skills along the way, and you just don't know where those skills are gonna take you. As an example, I've talked about this already in this video, my first ever website. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know about, this is such a long time ago. I didn't know about anything about SEO. I didn't know anything about keyword optimization. I didn't, I just didn't know about anything. Entities, there was so much I didn't know. I made so many mistakes, but I learned so many skills and you will do that. So if you are new to online business, building websites, even if it's just sales, 
uh, and contacting people, cold calling, cold emailing, etc. You are going to learn so many different skills in Rank and Rent that even if worst case scenario, because it does happen, not everyone succeeds with this business, as as does not every um, not no not everyone succeeds with any every type of business. You you get business closing down in the high street, you know, food shops, um, food shops, you know, food takeaways, those kind of things. You see them go, going out of business all the time. Um, you know, businesses always fail. There's a, such a massive failure rate. But nevertheless, with Rank and Rent, what I'm trying to say is, you are going to acquire very very valuable skills which you can use going forward. Whether it's you know. If you can learn lead generation, think how valuable that could be to a business, you know, any business on the planet. If you can learn sales, think how valuable that's going to be to any business. SEO is such a huge, huge skill to have um, in your arsenal. So whatever happens, rest assured, building a rank and rent asset portfolio is going to really, really serve you. OK, and I think that is so, so important. And we're nearly there. I also want to mention this because I think this gets branded around a lot and it's just not true. Rank and rent can be somewhat passive. It can be. And you can really put in a lot of different processes, systems. You can get members of staff. You can outsource lots of things, but it will never be truly passive. It, it just won't. There's always something you're going to need to do, whether it's on an existing project or let's be honest, you're just going to want to start a new project. You're going to want to scale this as far as you can. So even if you have three rental agreements, you're doing really, really well with them, you're gonna have an itch to go again. Trust me, I've been there. You're just, you're gonna, the thrill of it all, the, the journey is where all the fun is, you're gonna want to keep going. And for that reason, it just won't be truly passive. And things change, as I've mentioned throughout this video. Algorithms, um, you might lose a client and you need to go through that whole process of finding another client. You know, this isn't a truly passive business. It can, it can get very, very close to being one, and different processes, different elements, maybe even different sites may be passive for a moment in time, but they won't be forever. So don't kid yourself. Um, and to be honest, would you want it to be truly passive? Imagine having this as a truly passive business. Probably be quite boring. You know, what are you going to do with your day? Um, now, this is my final point. Um, but I hope this video has been useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below, by the way. It only does take one client. You could have five clients that just don't succeed. Five clients. Five projects that just don't succeed. For so many different reasons, they could fail. But your sixth client could be the one that takes off. And from that one client, you could build an absolute empire. I'll give you an example. You could have five websites that cost you, that cost you in total, let's just say for argument's sake, plucking this a little bit out of thin air, but it's also relatively realistic, a thousand pounds, thousand dollars. You could get a rental agreement at, for, you know, on your sixth project, say at three thousand dollars per month. You could have a client on that project for three years. That's thirty-six thousand dollars. The net delta of that is thirty-five thousand dollars in your pocket. But you could have given up on the first project. You could have given up on the second project. You could have given up on, you know, that you have to keep going because if you land one client. Honestly, there's so much money that can be made. And not only that, you can actually, I don't really want to use this saying, but I'm thinking like cash cow. You can actually milk a client for quite a lot of more money than just one site and one asset. You could, you could set up sites in different verticals. It could be different services that they provide. It could be in different areas. So as an example, if you were doing a landscaping company in a particular city, you may find that down the line, they offer landscaping services in a neighboring city. Now your whole niche site, that your niche site, you're, I'm making a lot of mistakes now, my brain's starting to go. Don't worry, I'm really finished. Your whole rank and rent site that you're charging them $3,000 a month for, £3,000 a month for, um, could actually just be so specific, so set up in such a way that you can't scale out to that next neighboring location. But if you built a new, new, new asset, and then rented that out to them for another $3,000 a month. You see what I mean? You see how this can scale? You could talk to them. You could find out they are very, very close with um, a plumber. And you see what I mean? That that's ties in the relationship building side of things. But what I'm trying to say is one client can literally change your, your entire business. So as I think, I think that's it, thankfully, because <laughs> I'm, lo I'm losing my brain. I'm losing my voice. Um, as I say, any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. I hope this video is useful. I really do. If it was useful and if you're still watching, 
please mention that below. I want to know that these videos are helping, otherwise I just simply won't record them. Um, so yeah, with all that said, best of luck, luck with Rank and Rent, particularly if you get to start. You can really succeed with this business, um, and I hope that I can help direct you to do that. And with all that said, I hope you have an excellent day.